Hello, folks. Here we are with uh, Sunday afternoon live Zoom. And today we have, uh, we're doing it on Sunday because uh, our special guest, Georgios, is uh, in Germany. And, uh, you know, a little difficult for people to stay up late, so it's okay. We don't mind uh, doing the Sundays. So how are you doing, Georgios? Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so basically, uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your background. I know you've been on the page and sharing, but for people who don't know, you know, how you grew up, what kind of diet, uh, where you went with that, and uh, how you found MFS. Uh, you've been on MFS for a while, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm still a newbie, you could say. I only started um, winter last year. That was my first MFS experience. I was on the page for over a year, but uh, I was kind of stuck in the uh, raw is law kind of thing. Yeah, man, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking um, after my last raw fast, which was 50 days on raw grape juice and lemon juice, I thought, well, it doesn't hurt to try new things. It never hurt me. <laughs> so uh, I just give this a try because I was really curious because so many people were having the same experience that I was having with the raw juice, only more of it apparently. <laughs> so I just gave it a try. And I thought, well, I just do this for a short time. So I set on doing it for a week on just the cooked grape juice and the plasma pudding, and the enemas, of course, because I would never fast long without doing enemas. I had to learn this myself because I always got begged up if I didn't do them. Mm -hmm. let's, let's back up a little bit. Uh, how did you grow up? What kind of diet did you eat? Oh yeah, um, well, when I was a child, I, I don't even remember eating much at all. I only ate, I think, one meal or two meals a day at the most. I was kind of used to not thinking about food at all. And um, I think I ate plant-based for the most part, cooked. Um, of course, meat, cheese, bread, a lot of grains, especially. And that was mainly with my mother. I was living with my mother and father until I was six years old, I think. And then around eight or nine years old, I was uh, going to, with my father because my mother, um, she had trouble raising me and I think it was too much stress for her. And I was really hanging on my father. I really had a stronger connection with him. And so one day she decided, okay, Perhaps it would be better if my father was raising me because my uh, mother and my father were separate at the time and there was no going back between them. So I went to my father and then my father was feeding me pretty much junk food every single day. Um, fried foods, uh, microwaved foods especially and which was very interesting at the time. I was a very very healthy child until that time i went fat within months like really really quickly and i always got uh, colds and flus and stuff like that and i was getting sick so quickly when my diet changed to that to that where i was only eating fast food all the time and then it was kind of hilarious we decided to eat a lot of Kentucky Fried Chicken foods daily, like it's the normal thing or something. They have that in Germany? Yeah, we have that. It's <laughs> also really popular here. <laughs> and so we ate Kentucky Fried Chicken, I think, for two months daily. <laughs> Even the, um, the people that knew us and they knew exactly what we were going to buy once we uh, entered the door because we were always eating the same thing. And which was very funny on 
the 34 days master fast, which was my last master fast, but was the long one that I did, I actually could smell the Kentucky Fried Chicken after 20 days. Wow. It was going for two weeks, I think. Every time I did an enema, it just smelled exactly like that. Remember <laughs> it exactly like chicken. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how the body uh, just stores this stuff because it doesn't know what to do with it. I, I remember the last time I went ate Kentucky Fried Chicken it was many, many, many years ago, but I, I got food poisoning then I never went back. <laughs> so this is, I don't know how many years, it's got to be maybe at 40 years or more. <laughs> But it's interesting, yeah. So how, when when you when you um, are eating these, I don't know if we even want to call them foods, but these foreign foods that the body can't recognize, uh, the body just stores it and stores it and stores it, and it's hard for us to comprehend how this works. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Because we've seen over and over and over again when people go on these long uh, digestive vacations, as we call them we start releasing all this old stuff and you get the odors and the tastes of all these foods and chemicals and stuff we've ingested many, many years ago. This is the wonders and the, the, the magic of, of fasting. It, uh, it just allows the body to purge everything. There's no restrictions. That's the reset. That's how um, we get to into that uh, uh, autopilot from the soul, I like to say. When we get into that mode, we, we can access that uh, perfect blueprint and the body just dumps and dumps and dumps everything that is not supposed to be in there. So it's, just, it's awesome. To, so you, you smelled that for how long? Two weeks. Two weeks. And I think it, it kept going. Like it, was, it wasn't over. It was just daily for two weeks. And then yeah. go. if I had continued my past, it would have continued to come for sure. Well, you ate it for how many years? I think um, four years. Wow. Okay. And I was, well, I was really, really constipated. Like, so sometimes when I look back, I don't even know how I survived because I actually had one or two bowel movements a month. Yeah. And I've, I've heard of uh, cases like that. And it's, it's rare, but... There are people, you know, with one bowel movement a month or two bowel movements a month, and it, it, it just boggles the mind. How does the body function, right? It's, it's hard to comprehend. Yeah, I, I really don't know how it works. <laughs> but the, the beautiful thing is I don't need to know. <laughs> no, the, the beauty, you know, the, the, the body is, is built so amazing that it does everything possible to keep itself alive, right? To keep yourself healthy, that's your responsibility, not the body's. The body's only responsible to keep you alive. And it'll do everything it has to. It'll put you in a coma if it has to, if it has to, to keep you alive, right? And that's the, where the misunderstanding of people um, thinking about health versus just staying alive. It's completely two different things. Yeah, and I was, um, well, after these four years, I was eating a lot of uh, pasta and bread. Pretty much my entire day was just pasta every day. And that was also for, I think, well, really, really long, like seven years or something. Like the, pretty much the entire time until I made the first change when I started, I think, something like two years ago, where I was so sick, I was just completely frustrated with my whole life because I was very sick for a long time. Um, the thing is, I um, was uh, chronically depressed when I was a teenager. And of course, with the constipation and a lot of sweating that I had to compensate for that, I felt really terrible pretty much most of the time. And people around me couldn't really understand what was going on with me because I didn't really even understand it. Like there was nothing really triggering me from the outside, but my body was a mess and everyone around me was eating the same thing. So I didn't even think about it or anything. Of course. Yeah. yeah and um, I developed a skin condition 
uh, rash on my face, which make my face look really bloated and inflamed. And my eyes and mouth and everything were feeling like they were on fire all the time. And this was going on for over six years. And the funny thing is, this kind of condition only developed when I wanted other people to understand how terrible I was feeling and I wanted my face to show it. Mm. Because when I was, was really depressed and everyone around me was telling me, hey, you have no reason to be depressed. I wanted to show them a reason and I was focusing on that for whatever reason, Emotion. every day. And so that's what I got. That's the disease when it came out of my face. And so everyone around me could see that there is something very wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, of course, in order to find a solution, I went from doctor to doctor to doctor. I think I was with 15 different skin doctors over the years. And every single one of them had no idea what was wrong with me. Some prescribed me some uh, medication. Um, I think it's called cortisone. Oh yeah, that's common. The skin inflammation, and uh, it makes the skin look normal. But the one time where I tried it, and then stopped using it for a while, it came back stronger than before. So I knew whatever this is, this cannot be the solution. It's like so many people actually keep using the stuff for years. Yeah, and. I just couldn't accept it, that this is what I have to live with? No, there must be another way. And um, I actually just kept using Google as my search machine for everything, because even though the doctors and people around me were saying, oh no, you cannot find the answers to Google, the doctors know everything, they are the experts. And the doctors were actually laughing at me when I told them what I learned through the Google machine on the internet, but you're, you're uh, just a young chap. What's your age? Um, I'm 23. 23. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a lot happening in these few years. <laughs> yes. I started with my health journey when I was 21. I um, saw some YouTuber that cleared his dermatitis. That's the name of the skin condition, condition that I had mm -hmm. um, with water fasting. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I tried already everything else. So I might as well just try this. So I went into a five day water fast and I immediately, immediately felt a change within me. Like completely everything just started feeling differently and the irritation in my face started to cool down a little bit. So I thought, okay, why don't I just keep going? I feel fine. So I went on and on and on until I eventually reached 30 days. <laughs> and I wanted to actually even keep going after that. But I was really tired because the water fast is, is a really stressful thing on the body. Uh, compared to massive fast, it has no <laughs> clinic power whatsoever. But it was enough for me at the You're time. Really water fast. That's nice. Yes. That's long, yeah. Yeah, because Were your I knew, mouth moving? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I didn't even use enemas. My first bowel movement was after 14 days or something. Wow, I was completely backed up, and um, it still kept going. And at 22 days or 23 days, I had a real strong bowel movement where black, oily, sticky stuff was coming out of my bowels. And when I saw that, I knew this is the stuff that was keeping me sick. Like it was so, so clear right in front of me. I knew that everyone around me must have this stuff. So no, what did it smell like? <laughs> well, it smells um, like death, like a, like a corpse, a rotten corpse. So I knew I was a rotten corpse from the inside. It had to be that. So. I knew that I had a lot of work ahead of, ahead of me and I knew I couldn't eat the same stuff that I was eating that was causing this stuff to accumulate inside my body. So I went plant-based after that 
because I didn't know anything about raw food or anything like that. I just went with the science because I didn't know what else to do. I had no idea what I was dealing with. And I followed these plant-based doctors like Dr. Greger and uh, Esselstyn and all these um, whole food plant-based diet advocates on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I felt pretty good compared to before. Well, I was feeling that shit. And eventually my bowels started to get kicking and I got one bowel movement every day, which was miraculous at the time because that was something I didn't experience ever since I was 10 years old or something. And I went for that for six months, but I still kept water fasting. I still did two days, three days every month because I knew this is this fasting stuff is the only stuff that actually did anything for me right because even though i was eating plant-based and feeling good nothing really changed it stayed the same so then i read about dry fasting and then on the plant-based cook diet i did a five-day dry fast mm -hmm. and that was amazing I got even greater benefits with that and I was really feeling the energy and there was something with my body. It felt like there was an empty space inside my body, like everything was just feeling empty and that felt amazing. So yeah, I know looking back at it, it's surprising, but I felt that on cooked food. Like now I wouldn't expect this at all, but I felt this. so. I knew I had to stick to, to fasting. So then I um, actually developed a new problem. I got infected by scabies by a friend of mine. And the only solution that I could find was the medication that was prescribed by doctors because I was actually trying every holistic remedy that I could find all the essential oils like um, tea tree oil, coconut oil, the cold showers, the alcohol to disinfect my surroundings. And these things, these parasites, scabies parasites, they just kept coming back into my skin. I still have scars from them digging it's tunnels. Very <laughs> itchy, isn't it? Oh yes, extremely. I, it felt like I was on fire. It was the worst thing I ever experienced. It just felt insanely bad i couldn't sleep for five days in a row once because it just kept coming the itchiness everywhere and um i went yeah i went actually into a hospital and they gave me this medication and i stayed for three days and i knew i didn't want to be there at all but i was so frustrated i didn't know what else to do and Fortunately, of course, it worked. The scabies was eradicated from me. And then it was also gone from my, um, from my home. But the medications had a side effect. It actually felt just as bad as the scabies itself. My skin developed a topic dermatitis everywhere where I was using the medication. And I itched everywhere for months, even though the scabies were gone. Like the doctor could see, okay, the parasites are dead. They're not there anymore, but still. Gino calls them outfection instead of infection. Because yeah. your body, that's, you know, if you get any kind of anything that goes in you, it's because the body, especially what we call bad parasites, um, they're basically living on our waste, you know? When we're yeah, and I knew that yeah. because when I was eating plant-based food, the itchiness was not so bad until I ate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you fast, that's the best you can do, really. I mean, uh, especially when you go up to the dry, right? I, I don't see any parasites as bad or good. They just are. They're, yeah. they're designed to do what they're yeah. designed to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and if you have the terrain for them to live off, they're going to they're gonna join. They're going to join you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They left the grains. Oh. When I was eating them, it flat up the most. Yeah. When I was eating fruit, it didn't flat up so much. Yeah, they love the obstructive food. 
because that's their, um, they're there to process it for us. Mm -hmm. They help us by processing yeah. They really are. They really are just helping. I mean, if there wasn't shit, they wouldn't be there. Exactly. Like, the problem is that we get it, some people get their bodies in a state where they think you're really a corpse and they take over. And that's a. a yeah, that's the ultimate where they take over. Yeah, that's a really uh, scary situation for people uh, to, because you just, it's just overwhelmed with parasites. And uh, you got to do certain things to help. Uh, move them out so you can s survive, but uh, otherwise just uh, start fasting and start cleaning up, right? If I knew then what I know now, I would have just went into a master fast and I know I would have left mm -hmm. eventually. I'm pretty sure of it actually. Because like everything else, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Did you try turpentine? No. Oh yeah, turpentine is powerful. Yeah, I heard. On the skin, for uh, and for itchy, it works really, really well. Well, um, this made me realize on my journey while I was encountering this flap with the grains mm -hmm. that apparently there must be some food that doesn't do this. So I went into the raw food thing. And then I went completely fruitarian from the cooked whole food diet oh. into it. How many years ago was that? That was, um, I think, well, the whole food plant-based thing was 2.5 years ago and the fruitarian thing almost two years. So I was whole food for six months and then fruitarian for 1.5 years, pretty much until now. Mm -hmm. And um, I went six months on just dates and a few berries because I really wanted to get kidney filtration because uh, I was into Dr. Morse, who was always talking about that kidney filtration. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw that every time I was eating only dates, that at the next day I would get the uh, sediment in my uh, urine. And at the same time, my itchiness would almost be completely gone. And then, after six months, I felt the pull again to the fasting because I was only doing this water fasting, etc., on my uh, whole food plant based thing. And then I went into this 50 day grape juice fast because I felt instinctively the food thing was, it was feeling good, but somehow it was just going way too slow and I felt backed up somehow. I felt heavy. So uh, even though I was only doing one meal a day on fruit for this entire time, I still felt that. So I did that and after two weeks, the internet was completely gone. Completely gone and it did not come back ever since then. And then I also did the animas and then I noticed that I had zero kidney filtration, well, according to Dr. Morse, because uh, there was no sediment in my urine at all, every single day on the juice fast. Mm -hmm. But even though there was no um, visible kidney filtration in form of sediment, I was still feeling better and better and better, getting better and better, way faster than on the filtration. So I knew the uh, cleaning out of the GI tract is way more important than kidney filtration because the results were night and day different. You couldn't compare it. So I was really confused. Like, why is Dr. Morris talking about this kidney filtration thing so much and not talking about the GI tract as the focus? Because it's so obvious when you fast, you can see, you clear out, and then you don't even need that much kidney filtration, just enough. I mean, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like on a longer fast, um, on the master fast, we have a lot of kidney filtration, but maybe you don't see it immediately. It takes. Yeah, it, it did come to me yeah. after several fasts, and then ever since then, I'm always filtering, even on juice. It just takes time. Yeah, it. Um, we're always filtering something, or we wouldn't. We cease to exist, though. So, um, mm -hmm. You 
you put it in the uh, fridge or freezer, you'll always see some sediment uh, in the air. And even though you can't visibly see it, there's something there. Uh, you know, uh, otherwise, like I said, the kidneys, it's a vital organ. If they, they don't work, your, your history very quickly. <laughs> so um, when they really open up, you start seeing a lot of more of the heavy uh, sediment. And of course, when you're eating, you're gonna see more sediment than, uh, you know, from the food residues as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you fast, that's where you want to see the kidney filtration. When you're eating, yeah, you, you, you should have kidney filtration, but when you fast is where you want to see the kidneys doing their magic, and that's pulling out all the deep stagnant obstructions. When you're eating, you're, you're getting filtration from the foods and stuff, This is which should be happening anyway, right? Yeah, in my opinion, one of the best ways to help your kidneys is to clean your GI tract. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yes. Start with the GI tract. And then slowly the kidneys will open up. Everything stems from the GI tract. Yeah, if you you will feel it when your GI tract is backed up because you're eating heavy food, you will feel back lower back pain. Why is that? Your kidneys are suffering because your bowels are backed up. You clear your bowel. The, the best way to help your bowels, when you have, I mean, your kidneys when you have lower back pain, is just get back on the fast. You know, clear your bowels. I mean, yeah, master fast to clear. It's all about clearing the bowels, and then slowly you will start seeing the. Um, uh, the kidneys opening up, and as you go further and further on the master fast, with the dry fasting, you will see like amazing amount of mucus, like thick mucus coming out, at least from me, um, uh, from somewhere, I don't know, some, any opening in the body, everything starts releasing. For me, uh, it could be the kidneys, it could be the, um, the reproductive system, I don't know, but I have a lot of mucus come out of me like after um, weeks on the master fast with the dry, especially the weekly dry and the monthly dry. Yeah, yeah so it does come, but it doesn't come um, immediately. The, the focus is on clearing the biggest obstructions and that's in the bowels. Oh yeah, and that is also what I love so much about fasting in general. Yeah. You don't need to worry too much about kidney filtration or this or that. Yeah. You just clean out and you be patient. You feel it. Yes, exactly. You don't need to see it. I, I was always confused by what other people were saying, like Dr. Morse, the plant-based doctors before that, and then the people in these fruit-based groups who were often focusing on nutrients and eating this and that. It never made any sense to me because I could feel it through the fasting, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. It, 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 all the protocols and diets, it's always focusing on addition. I haven't seen anybody focusing on subtraction. <laughs> no, in all these years I've been involved in always addition. There's something missing. You got to add this. You got to add that. You're missing this. You're missing that. Okay. I've done that. Did that. And... The answers were, you know, came out in plain sight that that's not where, that's not the road that's going to bring you to balance. And, and uh, you know, the biggest uh, revelation to me was we don't even need water. <laughs> you know, everybody's saying you got to drink water. You got to have so much water every day, right? So that was a big, huge revelation because I was a big advocate of, you know, the best possible water and you know, drinking water every day and so on and so forth. So um, we live and learn, you know, you're, 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 you've, uh, you know, you, you're, you, you guys in this newer generation are, uh, have access to all that information that took us decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys are doing it in a few years. <laughs> I, I'm really so lucky to, to have found this at all. <laughs> like, it's crazy compared to what's out there. Yeah. Like here is the truth and out there, just confusion all the time. Like from one thing to the next, to the next, and to the next. And I saw this, this with my own father as well, who was actually into supplements mm -hmm. before I went into this. He spent like 600 euros for supplements for iron, magnesium, zinc, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. This isolated chemistry. And it didn't do anything for him, but he still kept taking it. Because he was so, so lost, so blinded.
by what other people were saying. Yeah, we've all been down those roads, you know. I've spent a fortune on all that stuff. Hmm. So, you know, we uh, we live and learn. <laughs> and and the thing with the water as well, I was actually um, so dehydrated in the past, like when I was uh, on the pasta diet, I was drinking, I kid you not, six to seven liters of water per day on average. Wow. I was just chugging it every day because the first wouldn't stop mm -hmm. and of course the more you drink the more you first mm -hmm. so of course it would never stop and it's uh, the difference to now now i actually just drink two liters of grape juice a day and i, I don't i don't i have no first whatsoever nothing mm -hmm. i just drink for maintenance you could say <laughs> while i'm on this lifestyle of uh, Master fast hybrid uh, when I'm eating. And when I'm full master fast, of course, I do, I do two to three liters, depending how I feel. I always tune into that, you know. You can follow the protocol, and you should, because I didn't at the beginning. I was doing my own thing. And I had to learn that when I was drinking one to 1.5 liters a day, but it's not enough. I wasn't washing fast enough. And I was also asking in the group, what is going on? Why do I feel so terrible? And I didn't really get it at the time because the smash fast is much more aggressive than the raw juice fast. You can do this on raw juices and you won't feel it as much, at least I didn't, but in the masters, you, you cannot compare it. Yeah. Yeah, well, master fasting is not a juice fast. <laughs> this is the, this is the, uh, the thing that's very hard to drive home to people. Uh, people are programmed a certain way and they, because you're drinking juice, they call it a juice fast. Nothing to do with juice fast. Uh, we're, we're working with higher order and uh, whether you understand it or not, that's what's happening. And that's why uh, we see the massive transformations happening. Uh, not going to happen on a juice fast. It's just uh, not the same. Yeah. Yeah, and all, <clears throat> all the components of the system, everything is designed for a reason. You want to help your body with all these different components. Um, well, especially today, you know, like, you know, somebody who's had in the past, moving bowels once or twice a month, you know, it's amazing you survive, but it just shows you how miraculous the body is again. Uh, you know, it's uh, like, uh, what, what, how did you feel when you, when you were at that stage always constipated? Just depressed all the time. I, I just felt like shit because it was inside of me, shit. So. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, uh, it's hard to comprehend, but it, uh, yeah, there's people uh, like yourself that have <laughs> that experience. Uh, you know, one or twice, one, uh, they move their bowels only once or twice a month. And it's, uh, I remember one woman a few years, quite a few years back was like that. And, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get people to change their diets and stuff, but doing colonics and stuff, it took her a year before bowels started moving. I want a year. And uh, it just shows you how backed up. And, you know, it's, it's much, much easier ways to clean out, as you know, but uh, it's very difficult for people to want to make changes in their life. Uh, they just want everything handed to them. Um, doesn't work that way, but anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there are people who, um, who are extremely sick, especially like older people with so many toxins accumulating over time. And like you, you it, it, like you know, they are sick from, for example, colonic. You know, when they come for a colonic, it it just does not work. They, they cannot release. <clears throat> you know, there are people who passed. You know, they passed. You know, my um, you know, the people I have seen who were not successful in colonics. You know, and they passed I mean, because they were extremely, extremely backed up. Well, they don't want to change anything. They just. Believe colonics yeah. will solve all their problems and 
Yeah, and it's it's kind of yeah. I mean, you really have to change if you don't want to change, and it's not easy to want to change. You know, uh, when you're extremely depressed, you're ex extremely backed up. You're eight years old or something, you know, or even 50, 60 years old. You're you're tired. You know, you're. Yeah, how much sacrifice are you going to do? You know, to change. So many people they don't want to change. It's too much for them to change. It's too hard. It's easier to, I guess, let go and die. So, uh, how long ago did you find the page? How long have you been on the page, Georgios? One year. Mm, I think about a year ago. One year? How did, uh, I'm really new to this. <laughs> how did you hear about MFS? Um, that's a good question. Mm, let me think. No, it doesn't really matter. Right? <laughs> I don't really know. I don't remember, to be honest. It's, uh, you know, Maybe online. a person has got me. I don't know. Online somewhere. The detox community is not that big, you know, worldwide. Mm -hmm. so we, we, all, we know. It was definitely online. Yeah. yeah. And at first, <laughs> when I was asking about the grape juice in the group, and I was reading Gina's comments and responses to my question, I was really intimidated at first. <laughs> Because you are so um, you're so honest and so simple in your answers, like you don't sugarcoat or anything, you don't hug someone with words, <laughs> you just say it how it is. <laughs> I, I'm pretty <laughs> good. Man, I, I don't have the gift of the gab like you. You have the gift of the gab. You know, you, you know how to write and stuff like that when at such a young age and so on. But I'm just there to get the information. That's all I'm there to do. The best information I possibly know to help you. That's it. There's no issues involved, yeah. nothing. It's just the best information I could possibly give you as shortly and as simple as I can possibly transform. And people take things personally and all that. You know, there's only one reason we're yeah, here. Yeah, but like um, the serious people would stick with your personality. Like they like honesty. You know? The serious people like the honesty. And, uh, but you know, because it's a challenge to change. And if you don't have somebody like Gino who the, was like, the, the know, mirror of truth is a very hard right, pill right. that you cannot swallow. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be soft, you know, and just, yeah, you have to be direct. That, that mirrors, when if you, you get, see that mirror, you know, you know, when you're in these long fasts, you know, it, 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 you can't, you can't deny, you, you can, and sugarcoat and try to do whatever you can and and uh, but it will come back. <laughs> it will come back. You can you can run but you can't hide. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's also the very interesting thing about it. The most interesting thing, like you fast and suddenly you know something. Nobody tells you anything. You don't think. It's just like a feeling. You just know. So your, your, your thoughts when you heard about cooked juice? <laughs> well, but that juice, that, like, <laughs> you know, you're using something that is acidic, <laughs> like uh, the Dr. Moss thing, you know, acid, and alkaline, and it was also stuck in there. Acid, I don't know, people are, they don't know how to, they don't know simple chemistry, go do your research. All <laughs> fruit is in the acid category, all of it. <laughs> and, the, yeah. and the beauty is the, the least obstructive fruits are the most acidic. How's that? So everything we've been taught about chemistry is it's not going to help you. It's, it's irrelevant, really. It's, yeah, it's going to just confuse you. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why I don't pay attention to that stuff anymore. Uh, oh, yeah. Our body cannot function without acid, right? Uh, CO2 is uh, the energy transfer. Uh, the carbon is, and w without that, nothing will work in the body. You know, carbon being the most abundant element mm -hmm. uh, in the universe, one of them anyway. We have to have acid, you know, we have to have alkaline, we have to have balance. We have two. Yeah. And, and the most obstructive things, you know, fat, the alkaline. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I went down that road and I almost killed myself. I lost a friend of mine, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, what's being 
sold out there is a bunch of hogwash from my experiences. That's all I can say. I don't mean to put anybody down, but I almost kill myself with the wrong information. And many others have hurt themselves very badly as well. Uh, so um, we have to take things with a grain of salt. Um, when we're looking at science, 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 um, if you just look in the past 100 years, how many times science has, has changed its mind? Because they don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> so, it's, just, it's just all funded. You know, it's all it has an agenda for the dollar sign. And, you know, there's some truth in some of the sciences and stuff, but we really don't I know. Mean, yeah, I mean, science is, is fine. The truth is fine, of course. We like the, the truth and it's fun to learn, but it's the way it's done, the, the research is done, the way research is done is wrong. It's not, it's not, it's not the truth. The way it's done, it's, it's poorly done. You know? There's always an agenda behind it. Like who's paying who to make these studies. Like nobody is paying for the truth. They always want something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not the health of humanity. That something is not the health of humanity. That's not the priority for research. The priority is something else. Yeah. Shareholders, profits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all priority. Mean, it is not rocket science to know the truth. You know, Arnold Erich wrote his book more than hundred years ago. Yeah, and like him, we all expand on the knowledge through experience. We just do things ourselves and be our own scientists. Exactly. Because that's the only thing that we can re rely on. If you don't do something, you don't know something. And so many people only get confused because they don't do. They just read, believe. They don't know. Yeah. You cannot know until you experience it. We can you know, have an idea from others, other people's experiences. But, um, you know, what I find, like when I, I hear people say, well, I have to break my fast because my body told me. Well, the body's in a completely obstructed state. It's not giving you proper information. So, so you want to learn from you, the experience. You, you, yeah. yeah, you want to know. <laughs> you want to you you learn be from people that are, have cleaned out their GI tract for a few years. Those are the people you want to listen to more than just the average Joe, you know, Mary, that uh, hasn't got a clue and talking about things that they've never uh, experienced um, because uh, a few weeks on a fast is not going to give you uh, any uh, miracles. It's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 108 days, like we say, a few it's a good months, start. A few years <laughs> is not enough. Like, it, it takes time for us to. Um, to learn the truth and to experience the truth and you know the most difficult thing is to have faith in the process to change and do whatever it takes you know you like you know you believe you know it you know the truth or it's it's coming to you so you have to do your work you, you really have you all we always have to do i mean in everything in life forget about fasting and eating you have to work <laughs> to achieve things and work smart. So be guided, you know, um, and work hard. It takes hard work. It takes sacrifice to change your lifestyle. I mean, when I did raw food, it was hard. It was not easy. Nobody around me ate raw food. Everybody around me said, it's not good for you. Or when are you going to stop eating this diet? You know, like it's, it's, um, it's not easy to change and to commit and to be patient and to be, you know, determined um even if you have doubts you go back to the to the right way you know it's okay to have doubts because you're still your faith is not strong enough but you want to keep working on it and strengthen your faith in the process uh, so it's, it's not easy is it easy no it's not this is the even raw food is not easy it's for or even just e eating them like uh, fruits and vegetables only it's not easy it's a change in your lifestyle it is not for everybody and this is not just for the master fast it's for anything you do in life it takes faith patience persistence work being positive if you complain about every little part of the process it's not for you you're too negative right you have to like 
we have to, um, you know, find our way and uh, have fun with it. And uh, the challenges, see them as opportunities to grow and become stronger. And if you don't see them this way and you keep being a negative, it's, go it's, it's going to, it's not for you, right? It's that simple. I mean, um, yeah, just like everything in life, it's definitely not for the soft ones. Yes. Yeah. Like, I actually had learned a lot about that before I went into anything with health. I was a competitive uh, player in a game where I was, um, I don't know if you heard about it, it's League of Legends. It's uh, the most played uh, free online game. Computer game? Yeah, it's a computer game. Like, I was spending a lot of time home. I had a very sedentary lifestyle. So the computer was the main thing that I was doing. And I was playing actually like 10 hours a day. Whoa. I was trying and focusing very hard and getting really good to actually earn money with it. And I was earning a little bit of money with it because I was very dedicated and I was uh, making notes where I wrote down what I had to focus on every single day. Like when I went to sleep, I thought about it. When I woke up, when I went on the computer, I used music to focus, to get myself into a state of emotion that could drive me and automatically get me into the state that I need to be in order to do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And from that learning experience, this is the exact same thing with fasting. Like I apply all of this with a focus every single day. And even when I eat, the even while I am eating, I'm thinking about this. Wow. Awesome. That's the way, yeah. that's what it takes. Yeah, I can you, see your dedication. You have to live it and you have to love it. And you have to devote, right? Yeah. There's no other way. You gotta work hard. Not in this society that we live in. It's all food everywhere. <laughs> With, without the emotion, like you say, without the passion, nothing can happen. You, you have to be passionate. You have to really live. Yeah. If you don't love it with all your heart, and have really strong reasons for why you are doing this, you will not succeed. You will not be able to continue this uh, for a long time. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see your um, uh, hard work. Good job. You're doing Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> this is the best thing that I can do. And I have to do it. Because nobody else around me is doing it. And someone has to do the right thing, you know. Someone has to follow the truth. So he can also inspire others to also follow him. Like Ranjit does. <laughs> like Ranjit, the prime example of inspiration here in this group. Like, she's just showing everyone Bye. what everyone should be doing. <laughs> exactly. By example, yeah, she's she's living it, loving it, and uh, sh you know, inspiring so many of us. <laughs> so uh, you were uh, talking about uh, was it the juice and stuff when you found MFS. Uh, mm -hmm. What else are you gonna say there? So how was, how was your, like, uh, what did you feel differently when you did the master pass compared to before that? Well, at first, I actually had some pretty good results on the raw grape juice because I knew if I want any results, I cannot go with vegetables. That's just ridiculous. That's a waste of time. Even though so many people were doing it, like, why? You're cleaning. You're not doing it for nutrition. <laughs> but most people don't even get that, even though yeah. we are fasting. Yeah, well, what, what we don't like about the raw juice fast is it's uh, it's the fermentation process, you know, like because we're not. Oh yeah, and it burns. It burns actually. You can feel it. Yeah. I felt it especially on orange juice. Yeah. That way, my my ass was always burning on it. <laughs> and with the grapes, my lower intestines were burning a lot. But with a master fast, nothing, none of that. Well, the difference was night and day with that. But then also the cleaning, like I was already releasing 
the black stuff, the really stinky stuff, on day three, when I started my first full master class. Okay. On day three, it took me like almost two weeks to get the Battle of the Raw Juice. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for most people going into Raw, you know, you know with, with the balls being backed up for most people, right? Um, it's going to ferment. We're not meant to eat, I mean, to juice the fruits. We're meant to eat the fruits with the fiber to uh, slow down the, uh, you know, blood sugar increase and all that. I mean, that's how it is in nature. But with the master fast, it's a different story. So you say it's, it's not just, it's not just a juice fast. It's a whole system to help you release. Uh, but when we eat, we want to eat the fruits and green juices. We see them as, you know, they're fine. You know, they're not bad. They're not high in sugar. So it's okay to drink them to slow down though. Right. Like you were saying, it's not for cleansing. It's more for slowing down. You know? Oh yeah. It's just a tool that we use. Yeah. Or maybe for flavor. If somebody likes, you know, different flavor or whatever you know and you will like the flavor when you need it like when you know you're going too far it actually tastes amazing yeah. i was doing celery juice to slow down a little bit on my 34 days like i knew okay i'm going too fast but instead of just drinking more grape juice and doing more animals i did some green juice and it tasted awesome like i was so surprised that raw celery juice which tastes so savory and sweet kind of yeah. and it, it slowed it down instantly the instant uh, the instant that i put it into my mouth i was completely feeling differently yeah. because i was going really really deep and every time i was drinking grape juice i could feel a shift mm -hmm. i was go getting very very sensitive mm -hmm. because i was already doing a lot of cleaning well the raw cleaning before the master fast so I was already prepared, you could say. My body was already into it. Yeah. So I was going really hard there. You did two, two months on Master Fast Weekly, I guess, I think, right? Where you ate one day a week or something? Before um, yes, I did this for one month. Yeah, one month. One month. Okay. Just uh, three times, seven days. And I really wanted to know how it would affect me because I knew I had to keep going with the fasting. I knew it was the right thing to do because nothing else really give, gives me the results that I need. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you had the mucoid plaque coming and you felt the shift and... Oh yeah, and I had some parasites too, like a rope worm that was covered in yellow mucus, but it had this strange head like of thing, like little bloop, yeah. uh, black. Yeah was really big so I knew it was a parasite even though my father was saying no no it's mucus it's not a parasite <laughs> like my father he uh, was with me this entire time I, I am living with him mm. and even though I'm doing all this crazy stuff he was still supporting me because he could see that I am just getting better and better mm. there are no negative side effects doesn't matter how crazy it seems <laughs> so what can you do that's great. Good. Yeah. I, I'm really lucky because I know most parents, they would uh, yeah. send me to the hospital or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Some crazy stuff is happening out there. I heard some really crazy stories, like people sending their child to a mental asylum yeah. to um, saying that they have an eating disorder and all this stuff. Yeah. But the eating itself is the disorder. Because I feel worse when I eat. I don't feel amazing like I do on fasting. Yeah. That's great. Um, and you were doing the enemas, but I guess you were not doing enough, right? Well, on the master fast? I was actually doing two a day what? when I was doing the full master fast. I was just not drinking enough juice and I was dry fasting 16 hours a day. It was way too much. Yeah, it was way too much. and Because I was already used to it from before. Right. I yeah. didn't realize it. Now you increased your juice um, and the dry fasting, you're, you know, yeah. You're yeah, now I stick it to 12 to 13 hours. Yeah, that's great. And right now I'm also fasting. I've been for a couple of days. Because when I returned to eating, the first month on fruit was easy. But then the second month, I was constantly obsessing about food that I hadn't eaten for two years. 
for pasta and pizza and all this stuff. And when I was going into a grocery store to buy fruit, I was like a demon. Like I, I only thought about this pasta. I need pasta. I need pasta. I, I didn't understand what was going on. Like emotion, <laughs> the seed of everything. <laughs> like it was overwhelming. I I could almost not stand it. Yeah. So I knew I um, I can't do this back and forth thing. I I, I, I still was stubborn even though these emotions came up i kept going with the fruit because i knew it had to be temporary right it wouldn't last forever so what's the problem i just have to really focus very hard because what else can i do Good. i can't return to my old ways so i have to well, i have no choice some do so some choose to go back yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's their choice right that's and i get it right like it's, it's actually so hard when these emotions come up yeah no surprise to go back but the mirror of truth is very very hard for some to uh, yeah. have a look so yeah when, it can when, be a challenge when we're ready and we face it and we embrace it and allow the uh, emotions to flow out and everything changes Everything yeah. changes. Your whole being changes. Yeah. Well, what we suggest actually on the Master Fast, at least six liter enemas. So like per day. So that would be like three enemas maybe. That's at least. Um, and lots of washing. Lots of washing, especially when you have this emotional, you know, like. Yeah. I, know I noticed even when nothing comes out, the emotions do come out. I can feel it. Yeah. Even when, I, when just the water comes in, I instantly feel it. Like this a shift, like yeah. um, this moment, I feel really irritated from anything, annoyed or whatever. And then the next moment I'm, oh, it's just, <laughs> everything's fine. Yeah. Just with the water coming in. Are it's you, amazing. Are you washing your colon every day, even when you're eating? Oh yes, all the time. It's just like brushing my teeth. I have to do it. So it's just, yeah. I can't imagine going without it because when I skip it, I don't feel as good. It's it's too important. I have to keep certain. Yeah. Yeah, we're either obstructing or de-obstructing. Choice is always yours, right? <laughs> yeah. And the, the thing with the bowel dependency, like Dr. Moore's thought always saying in his videos where people would get uh, dependent on the animals. Whenever I skip an enema, I instantly get a bowel movement on the same day. Like, there's no problem. Doesn't matter how often I use them. Yeah, we've only seen the complete opposite of people's bowels get stronger and stronger and stronger way when they uh, are doing uh, yeah, when they're you know doing the whole system you know fasting and uh, bowel cleanses of all sorts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll hear all kinds of things. You know, I mean, uh, I work in colonics, right? So uh, we hear all kinds of things about the colonic and the enemas. And actually, I didn't. I wasn't a big fan when I studied colonics. I wasn't a big fan of colonics really because I studied with Dr. Morris too. Um, and he was not a big fan. And I didn't really, but I, but I wanted to work in the field and I wanted to talk to people about raw food. Didn't know how to do that. Who will come to me to listen to me just because I'm experienced. So I thought, you know, I have, I, I want a job, you know, so people can come to me. And so um, uh, I decided to take it. I, I remember that colonics is, um, you know, uh, it was in one of actually my, my iridology course. I took an iridology course, uh, iris analysis course, and my homework, one of my homeworks was to do colonics and enemas. So that was the first time I ever did wash my colon. Um, and then um, I thought when I work in colonics, you know, so I studied and I asked um, you know, the school if they have a job for me. They gave me a job. I work Saturdays, Sundays only. So if you want something, you have to go for it, you know, go for it. You know, I wanted to work. I got a job. I worked only on weekends because they, because they had no space for me. And then they liked me. They gave, you, they gave me more work. So I worked five days a week, including Saturday, Sunday for a year and a half. And then I said to myself, if I love this, I will open my own place. And that's exactly what I did. So when you want something, go for it. When you want something, go for it. What I'm, I was gonna say is, um, 
I thought, you know, when I did the colonics first, I thought when people see what comes out of them, maybe they will consider, you know, questioning what goes into their mouth, you know? And I said, you know what, I'll work with this for a year and see if I like it or not. And then if I do, I open my own place. And I fell in love with it. It is very rewarding, very rewarding. You're helping so many people, um, but it's not for everybody. Some people, you know, they're doing it just to try it. But to fall in love with colonics, you have to be regular. You have to come to colonics. I'll be right back. You have to do colonics regularly to fall in love with it and to appreciate it. Some people appreciate it from the first day, but not everybody. Um, so it's definitely not for everyone. You will hear all kinds of negative things. I know for me, when I do colonics every day, amazing. We here we do colimas. I used to do anima when I was at home. Um, and then when I came here, we do colimas. It's much more efficient. And um, the most efficient is definitely colonics. There is no question. So colonics, colima, and then enema. Um, yeah, washing the colon, or we wash the colon pretty much every day, unless we're dry fasting. Um, a really important part of uh, the lifestyle. Uh, do we not move our bowels? Of course we do. Of course we do on our own. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's de-obstructing your body, you know? But people who were constipated before the master fest, you know, they say like, I'm moving my bowels like there's no tomorrow, you know? Yeah, many people um, have absolutely no problem. I mean, I don't know anybody who has a problem. Maybe it takes a day for the food to go down and then you start moving maybe after a day or two when you start eating. Um, and maybe some people don't eat enough, you know? You also have to eat enough, you know? It, it was like clockwork for me after the mass of fast. Yeah. Always at the exact same time. Yeah. In between 14 and 16 hours after my one food meal a day, it was always coming out at that time. Always. Yeah. Never skipped. <laughs> uh, pretty much everybody who's done uh, a long MFS, you know, 60, 90, 108 days, they, they come out with super bowels. <laughs> super bowels you have to experience it to understand what it means <laughs> yeah they work very very efficient when you uh and, and yeah yeah when you come off of a long digestive vacation yeah and you even after a short one i could already feel it yeah, I, of course 30 40 but i mean when you go the real the, you really see a big difference it's it's amazing yeah but uh i would have never thought that food could pass through me so quickly like I could feel it, like I eat something, the stomach gets full, mm -hmm. and then after just a few hours, it's empty again. <laughs> As it should be. Again. Yeah, and you can tell a huge difference. I mean, if you are not moving your bowels after the master fast, what are you eating? You know, the, that's the question. If you're eating obstructive foods, I, you know it, you feel it. You don't even have to like see your poo. Your poo are big balls, you know? but. You will feel it. You'll feel it in your head <laughs> if you're obstructed after the master fast because it's so clear for so long, and then you put all this heavy food and it's gonna go all over the place. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna be inflamed. Um, you have fogginess in your head and uh, be less focused, less energetic. Yeah. Oh yeah, I noticed that especially with the fats when I was raw. Like some people telling me because uh, I was so skinny, like uh, eat some of this food, of the heavier raw foods, and you will gain weight again. Nuts and seeds, and oh yeah, very obstructive. I didn't gain any weight on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was still <laughs> getting <laughs> constipated by it. Yeah. yeah. You know what Gino says? When you are thin, when you are losing weight, a lot of weight. You have to fast more. <laughs> That's more. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah. so the nuts and seeds are not really the solution to gain the weight. That's where she. Well, this this is the addition mentality, right? You need something yeah. to gain weight instead of allowing the soul to build the physicality, and that's that's what we're all programmed to do, right? You need this, you need that. You're missing this. You have to have so much of this every day. I mean, you can gain inflammation it's, it's, and swelling. It's, you know, yeah. but, but, it's, yeah. it's a very very difficult program to to. Ch to change in, in, in us, you know, it's, we're not taught that. We're, we're, 
it's complete opposite. So we have to really put all our intent and emotion in, in, in experiencing and coming to this new understanding. And, uh, and when we do, everything changes. Everything completely changes as you're starting to experience. Um, you're still uh, a newbie. Newbies, any, you know, two, three years, you're still a newbie of living, actually living the lifestyle. If you're not living it, if you've done one master fast, you're still a newbie. If you're not living and loving it, you know, continuously using the principles of living the lifestyle. And that's the key to actually live it and love it. Um, you know, do a long fast and go back to your old ways. What for? Just keep doing what you've always done. And it's, you're just going to not put yourself through punishment of not feeling good and so on and so forth. Um, you'll have the experience to remember and maybe in a future date, you may want to jump in and people have done that. They've done the long MFS disappear, come back after a year or two. We've, we've had several people actually do that because they realize there's no answers in addition because <laughs> they're getting some other information. Oh, you're fasting too long. You got to have this. You're missing that. You're putting all that information in people's head and people start believing it again. And then they go there and they find it's not the truth. They felt way better when they were fast. So they come back and they start fasting again. Right. So it's full circle. You know, MFS is here when you're ready. It's not for everybody. <laughs> and you know, the biggest thing for me was, but after understanding that I eat for nothing but pleasure, like, like really feeling that that's the truth. I felt a really strong dissonance when I got back to eating. Like at first, yeah, okay, it's a lifestyle. It's fine. I keep fasting two days a week. That was my goal. And I kept doing that until now. Awesome. Yeah, I skipped a week or two in the beginning. <laughs> it, was, it was really hard. But now I am doing it consistently. And even though I am doing this, it just, just feels wrong to eat. Like I enjoy it, it tastes good. But I, I know how I'm supposed to feel. I know what's supposed to be normal. And that's the fasting. That's the normal state, not the eating. And just like a conflict inside of me. Like the, the, the monkey mind wants it's food. But me, I know, no, no, no. I want to fast forever. <laughs> <laughs> so that is why liquidarian lifestyle is my goal. And I'm just, I'm just like Balancing. taking my steps onto that because it, I do feel that it's getting easier over time. Mm -hmm. It really does, just like training. And it gets easier the more I focus on it because it's not, not the time that does the work for me. It is me, the focus. So if I focus more, it gets faster done. Get yeah. to it. This, this is all part of the journey. You know, we're going to fall off here and there. There's no big deal. It's as long as uh, we don't do anything uh, crazy yeah, after a long, MF, uh, long digestive vacation. That's, that's the real challenging part. And some people have, uh, you know, put themselves in a very dangerous situation mm. uh, doing stupid things but uh, you know fasting doesn't kill it's uh, eating that kills I keep saying that over and over yeah overall you want to learn how to have control over your life I mean this is in general this is not just fasting and eating this is in everything you want to achieve in your life you know all your all your dreams you have be, you know don't be confused it's okay not to like be perfect but you know get up and get back on track and very important is to be uh, part of you know the uh, support system you know like um, uh, the Facebook the zooms um, uh, you have the Facebook live just to help us you know support each other and learn and, uh, because it's a completely different way of thinking out there you know you know, that is why we are here. And I could really feel that even um, when I heard about the Master Fast system for the first time. Like just the name, Master Fast system. What? You're focused on fasting? You actually know what you're talking about? Because <laughs> all the other people, not fasting, will eat, eat, eat. Even Dr. Morse, no, eat fruit, it's okay. Oh, do a grape fast. But you're eating the grapes, you're not fasting. 
Yeah, yeah Dr. Morris is not okay. too much into the fasting. We love I mean, he, he's, he's a great guy and he means well, I, I think. <laughs> But we love, we love the most, most people don't even want to change their diet, let alone fast, right? So yeah, but that's the thing. It's for most people. Yeah. So if, if for most people. Yeah, if people could start at least changing their diet, that's a good start. But, uh, you know, we're, I, I'm not, there's other people that can guide people for that. We're, we're in to go for it. <laughs> we, 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 we're tired of all the other stuff. We've been there and we want the yeah, best yeah. possible, uh, fastest way to um, clean up the body and uh, and live a lifestyle where. But it's uh, a lifestyle, even though it's fast. It's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, it'll be the, the lifestyle that's least obstructive. That's what we're after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to fall off, and you know, you know, you don't want to like. It's not about being an extreme way of living and versus. Raw food is amazing. I mean, I come from raw food. You come from raw food, years, nine years, hundred, how many years? Almost ten. Hundred percent raw. Before it was like big online. You were doing it. Um, uh, I I started seven years ago. And we have learned a lot from the teachers out there um, about the raw food, about the herbs. Um, and then Gino was more into the fasting part, adding the fasting to the whole thing. Um, so it's just different way, different teachers, you know, focusing on different things. Um, but yeah, uh, fasting and clean eating is, is uh, how we see it. And of course, with all that, you know, comes the physical, emotional and spiritual uh, growth, you know, it's, it's all connected. Anybody have any questions for Georgios? We have uh, B. Inga, Sarah, Henrik. Thanks for sharing, Giorgio. <laughs> just, just think of the years you're slaving yourself. I didn't get here until I was 59, so. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's four, 40 plus, you know, 35 years or something that you're saving yourself from. That's amazing. I, I, you know, it's the same. It's the same in AA. There's a there's a couple of guys that came in really early. You know, 18, 19 years old, and you just I'm in awe of that. I know, it's awesome. And, and I am in awe of the young people coming in to take taking taking control of their life and their health. It's 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 amazing. So these will be the people in the next 20, 30 years. You know, that'll be uh, the uh, masters. You know. Yes. Uh, you know keeping this thing going um, yeah and you know people are sick and tired of being sick and tired even the kids even the kids i think the kids are feeling it much faster uh, much earlier oh yeah i was feeling uh, it very very young i was very tired of it yeah yeah you you got like in a much worse shape than your parents did at your did, age, did you, know? you play oh, yeah, much worse mm -hmm. did you play outside at all growing up um as a kid as a teenager, no. But as a child, yes, yeah. But as soon as you reach the teenager years, always sedentary. Yeah, wow. completely. Like over a decade, completely sedentary. I, I only left home for school. Yeah, time to jump into the dirt and start playing with it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh yeah, I did actually. Awesome. Just two days ago, I was uh, going out with a friend was also as young as me and I was trying to um, teach him to be more intuitively and to enjoy nature as it is without thinking and I was um, trying to show him how I interact with nature when I go out like how I learned it by, by fasting but I just tap into the feeling of it so um, I was in front of a lake with him and I just told him, hey, uh, get out of your socks and just walk barefoot about the ground. And even though there was a lot of shit from the animals, <laughs> the poop, it still felt pretty good <laughs> to just walk on the grass. That's just this magnetic pull that you feel. It's a strange energy that calms you down physically and mentally. 
and you can also feel that when you touch flowers and trees it's like when you touch the tree you become the tree <laughs> so beautiful it's so so nice it's really awesome that we have the ability to do that yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's a gift and most people don't even don't, yeah. don't get even to experience it yeah the uh, the fields are awesome you know the magnetical is actually the giving the gravitational is the receiving and and uh, if you tune in you'll you'll feel these energies uh, flowing through you uh, the more you fast the more you feel them especially when you drive fast Mm -hmm. I did the three day dry on the 34 days and that was around 30 day mark or something and I was going outside and I could feel the energy fields of every object around me. At first I thought hmm, what's going on because I didn't really uh, hear about this from anyone before that. I, I was really new into the master pass and everything. So I didn't get so many testimonials and didn't really think much about it. But I could feel the, like it's so weird, like even objects, like dead objects, I could feel them. And that was only happening during the dry fast. Once I returned to juice, it went down again. Mm -hmm. So I knew, okay, whatever is happening, there's magic going on here like i don't imagine this because i didn't expect it i don't know what i'm doing it's just a feeling and the strangest thing is it feels so natural like it's normal like you're supposed to be feeling that yeah like yeah it's not scary at all it's more it's welcoming yeah it's completely normal yeah it's so beautiful All right. Anything else uh, you want to share? Any healing reactions you went through? Um, Emotional stuff? I had some strange dreams. Mm. I, um, by the w one dream was really, really strange. After the 20 day mark on the MFS, I think, um, well, at first, I had no idea what I was dreaming. I was dreaming of three different masters that were testing me. They were asking me questions about myself. And then, after all the questions were done, they gave me a, a sheet of paper. And on the bottom end of the paper was written what I am like uh, here this is you <laughs> and it was really strange it said i am an osiris ritualist <laughs> like um i didn't know what that was because i didn't hear that at all and uh, an osiris ritualist like when i was a child i was really into um, egyptian mythology I was always very interested in Egyptian architecture and the history and everything. And this um, fascination kept growing as I got older, but that was completely just coming from myself. No one else was influencing that. And then and this, this dream was over and I began researching. So I Googled what is an Osiris ritualist and the internet was telling me it's um, a high priest that was giving uh, sick people um, beer and herbs to drink. Beer with herbs to cure their ailments. Can, can that be a coincidence? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. It was really strange because I didn't know what it was, and it was a strange coincidence. Yeah, well, we make our herbal wine. I guess you can make herbal beer. Yeah, like like with the tinctures, like it's alcohol with herbs. And um, the thing with me, with me personally, is when um, I see people that are suffering, 
I really want to help them. Like, I, I, that was always like that, even when I was a teenager, even, no matter how bad I felt, when somebody else was unhappy, that was my focus. Like, I was thinking of uh, things in my head, like, how can I help this person? What's wrong with it? And I kept focusing on that because it was so important to me. Like, all the, like, not, not all the people, but most of the um, students around me at school, when someone was depressed, they didn't care. They just kept minding their own business. But I, I had to fix that person, even, even if it wasn't my friend, it, it didn't matter, just, it didn't matter. When someone is suffering, I really want to help. And that's also why I'm doing this. This is part of my passion, because I know I found something that can help me, so it can help anyone else, everyone else. So the only way I can get this to other people is by doing this constantly on my own. Like never stopping this lifestyle because as soon as I stop, I lose the ability to help others or at least it gets diminished significantly. I know that. So <laughs> it's kind of a res responsibility that I have for continuing on this path and getting better at it. Because uh, otherwise, it's kind of like, what's the point? <laughs> what else am I going to do? So you're helping yourself to help other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's really important. Yeah, you know, uh, this, the whole thing about humanity is to be in service. But um, the thing is that people want to be, have to want to be helped. And that's the challenge. Like I, I just mentioned before in these past three decades, I've seen that over 99% uh, will never ever change, no matter mm. what they say. And it's a tough pill to swallow uh, for, for a while for me until I got fed up, but, you, know, you know, wasting all my energy on people and they're just taking your energy and not doing anything with it, right? So I completely flipped and said, if you want to know, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> and if you come to me, yeah. I don't go out there anymore. And so I completely changed that because of my experience with uh, so many people. Uh, you know, the, the detox community is it's small but around the world, but it's still probably a few million people. And, um, you know, uh, I, even in this community, people say things and they just don't follow through. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's true. That this is great, mm -hmm. but I mean, this is just uh, this is what it is. You know, we be the change. Just be the change. Yeah, the only way, like you can, like ultimately, uh, you can help is by being the change you want to There's see. No other way. We share, we share with everybody. But um, uh, if they want help, they will have to, they will have to, uh, uh, you know, they will have to come and and uh, join. You know. Um, I really believe it's true. Yeah. Like, if you become a change, it just happens automatically. You don't really have to think about it. Right. Because I saw it with my father. The more I fast, the more he fasts. <laughs> I notice it. I don't know if he is aware of it. But um, when I stop fasting, he also stops fasting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we feel it too with each other, right? Eh? Yeah. We don't necessarily fast together because it's a spiritual, you know, personal experience. So uh, when you start, I would catch up. When I start, he would catch up. Um, yeah. And we inspire each other, you know, maybe not immediately, but uh, at some point we, we inspire each other by sharing, by being the change. Yeah, Steve says the world needs more youth like Georgios. Yes, sir. We need but by the way, my name, uh, that's how it is in German, Georgios. Oh, wow. Georgios. <laughs> yes, it's George in English, actually. George. So, George? Yes. <laughs> it's tough to pronounce it in German. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a Greek name. Yeah. The Greeks, uh, when they translate into another, another language, I don't know why they have to do their own thing. 
Gilgos, go Gil. I can't say. <laughs> My teachers cannot uh, pronounce it either. You're not the only one. <laughs> George, I, I always have to correct them, mm -hmm. but they keep doing the same mistake. Mm -hmm. Or um, people keep writing my name with uh, U instead of O. Mm -hmm. Georgi Yus. Yeah, it's not easy to. That really annoys me when I hear it. It's not a common name. Well, it used to annoy me, but not really anymore. Yeah. Like, the, the cleaner I get, the less things annoy me. Mm -hmm. Less shit. <laughs> less yeah. shit, less irritation. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, sometimes people uh, get upset when their names are spelled incorrectly. Um, being an immigrant, I don't care. But yeah, I mean, yeah. It's funny, actually. So why not laugh about it? So yeah. who cares? Yeah, and you can correct them. Oh, Be the change, continue, live it, love it. Simple. We, uh, too simple. Sorry? Mm -hmm. It's too simple. <laughs> when, when I tell this to anyone, it doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter. Someone has to experience it. Yeah, they're looking for the signs, the reason, how, who, what, where, when, why, and yeah. By the time they figure all that out, they're not here anymore. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it is, we, uh, all those years, and I just think back of all the research and reading and studying. And, and well, it all got, it got me here, but I'm just saying, whoa, my goodness gracious. If I could have just walked into what you walked into, how much time I could have saved. <laughs> It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, the time wasn't. Uh, it's perfect. God planned it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen. <laughs> There's lessons in all the things that I have to go through in every one of us. So it's all beautiful. And we continue to live it. We continue to love it. We fall off here and there. Big deal. As long as we're, we're focused and determined and devoted, we know that uh, just another day. And we continue to walk in the park and embrace it all. So uh, it's all about trusting not only yourself but the experience. Like you're supposed to experience this, otherwise it wouldn't happen. Because it would be pointless otherwise. Exactly. It was all everything I see in the past three decades. If I, I look at everything the way it happened. It, Every single experience had a purpose mm -hmm. to come to where I am now. Everything. It's just mind-boggling to look back at that. You know, every little thing. <laughs> so nothing is by chance, you know. There's a reason for everything in the higher order of things. And it's all beautiful. All the pain and suffering was amazing. Uh, and uh, it just uh, helps us grow. So... Pain is, uh, is, is uh, uh, a teacher. Yeah, it's a great teacher. It's, a, it's a, the gateway a to, to learn and to expand and grow. And you know, without it, the world would be stagnant. Yeah. yeah. You know, whether it's physical. But life pain, needs struggle or nothing happens. Exactly. Whether it's physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, uh, we're going to experience pain. That's why. We're in this realm. And if you don't have any pain, then you want to sacrifice <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do something <laughs> that is challenging, you know? I don't know. If there's anybody that hasn't experienced pain, that would, say, that would be interesting. Challenge, yeah. I mean, everybody has a challenge. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something to say. <laughs> All right, Giorgio, is there anything else? Or we wrap it up? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a very good talker, to be honest. Like, I can talk, but um, I always need a trigger from the outside or something. Yeah, that was great. Be because I know there is much to talk about, but 
not really um, I don't know I don't really focus on talking so much like to write <laughs> yeah uh, when something inspires me out of nowhere you know yeah then I like to write or talk and then I can talk a lot <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I am like this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and uh, sharing your wisdom. Thank you for this platform. People, you. you're welcome. People could, uh, you know, relate to somehow, you know, with your age and your experience and so on and so forth. And that's why we continue doing this. This is a support system. As we've said a billion times, uh, without the support system, you're not going to see many succeed. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the, the people that aren't around the page and don't connect, um, they fall off and uh, they disappear very quickly. Um, you know, there's one thing that c comes to my mind. The weight loss thing is pretty interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's probably the biggest challenge for most people when it comes to the faith and to their own body. Yeah. Like they see the health improves, but then they get super skinny, like a skeleton. And then they think, oh no, there must be something wrong. I must be lacking something. They get scared. But I never thought that. I actually dropped to 34 kilograms. Mm -hmm. I'm 170 and 34 kilograms was my lowest after this full master pass. But... I was feeling amazing, so <laughs> <laughs> I knew it doesn't matter, but um, so many people, did they get scared. Like, don't get scared. The, the weight will come back. It's, it's just weight. It's just your body. It's just a tool. It doesn't die from losing weight. It dies when, when it's sick. When it's sick, when there's shit in it, that kills it. It's, it's very simple to understand. When you get skinny, you may think, oh no, my body is eating itself. It's eating my organs. If that happens, shouldn't well, that's, you? That's what's taught out there, right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. I never felt that. Uh, my organs, they felt better and better. They never felt like they were eaten. Yeah, yeah. Never felt like I was eating myself. But, but everything, yeah. if people just listen to how they feel, but they. Um, they get lost in the monkey mind, like you always say. We are programmed. I bet you every single person who has lost a lot of weight has complained about it on the master class. I've seen it, you know? I, I, you know, I lost a lot of weight too. Um, we judge ourselves because of the programming. Of course, others judge you. And others judge you? So much. Like, yeah, my, my friends were telling me jokes, like, oh, you look like if I if I kick you, you will die. <laughs> yeah. You look like your bones are gonna break any time. Yeah, I know. Really nasty stuff. What's oh, yeah. uh, What's your height? Uh, one seventy meters. Wow. Uh, one hundred seventy centimeters. Yeah. You were uh, yeah that you went pretty skin and bones pretty much right. Yeah, absolutely skin and bones. Yeah. In thirty in thirty days. No, but that, but what? No. no uh, I was, before the master fast, I was, I think, 41 kilograms. Oh, you're already... I was like five kilograms for the master fast. I was already doing all this other fasting before that. I was already skin and bones when I went into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Uh, yeah, you, you went through a lot of changes. Uh, it's just a very short time, too. It's just two years. Like, so many people think, oh, a whole year of fasting? Aren't you clean already? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a client uh, who told me, she showed me a photo of herself after she did chemo. She said, you see how you look now? How I looked in this photo, you look like me now. <laughs> yeah, this is what she told me. I mean, she passed away okay, from cancer. Um, so she, like, she saw me at my healthiest as herself at her, at her, at her sickest. So like, it's just like, yeah, of course there's no, you know, um, but, but you know. Answers are in plain sight. She's not here. <laughs> people, you know, oh. sure Sad. In peace, you know. um, when people judge you and we get upset, it's because we judge ourselves. 
of course, you know, it's us. You know, we believe the right. Yeah, of course, you have challenges from the outside, but you, if you don't have the faith, you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, upset and sad and depressed, you know. Um, and and you don't have to do it quickly, you know. You don't have. That's why we say, please follow the protocol the way it is, because when you do it properly, it's designed to help you release waste slowly. At you know, not too much, too fast, you know. And it's all for the emotions, really, to go at your own pace. Yeah. So you don't go crazy yeah. or lose faith. Yeah, and you will not. about that? Mm -hmm. Emotions, because it takes time. That's why it's a life cycle. It takes time to clean up your programming, but also uh, you lose much less waste, you know, like slower, like at a slower pace. And so you don't judge yourself too, too much, you know, because it's happening much slower. So you can kind of absorb it, get used to it emotionally and physically and you know and educate yourself by being part of the community so you can you understand this is totally the way it is this is you know this is uh, uh good for me that i'm cleaning up and releasing waste and with that the, the weight is going yeah we'll uh we'll have big revelations uh, in the next uh, you know decade uh, of people actually living and loving it uh <laughs> You know, look how the transformations happen in such a short time when you uh, continue with this and, as they let the, and the years go by. Yeah. It's just, it's just mind-boggling what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There were so many changes with me. Like I lost track. Like at some point, oh my God, so many things are changing. Yeah, yeah. You can't, I can't keep up. You can't remember everything. It's just because yeah, exactly. The, the problem is gone. Who but, but my friends and my father they notice like my, my friends they were telling me i look way younger yeah, yeah. my hair looks completely different yeah. and it's just like i'm a different person now of course like, co completely changed on every level it's just so, so, so exciting because it uh, makes you think what else can i do like how much more can i be like myself and you then you know it's uh, limitless how much better can i feel isn't yes. You go to bed excited for tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, we never felt that before. It's yeah. just today, another, you know, you know. Oh, day. another day of pain. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, when I was fast, when I'm fasting, I sleep like, well, um, six hours a day. Okay, if I'm detoxing really hard, it can be eight to ten hours. But if I'm feeling good. For most of the time, it's six hours. But then when I'm eating, it just goes up consistently oh, yeah. for eight hours. Yeah, your body needs stress. Yes. <laughs> Answers in plain sight. Your food does not give you energy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it takes. <laughs> and it builds you up nice and plump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, 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 uh, it, it is so simple and it's, when you pay attention, the answers are right there. It's, it's so obvious. Um, we have not been taught to uh, common sense and, you know, and creativity and, and uh, asking the proper questions and all that. So uh, it's very challenging for a lot of us, you know, that have uh, grown up in this wonderful fast paced society that we've developed, but uh, things are changing slowly and uh, by us being the change, we can affect uh, so many people. Uh, because inspire, yeah. Inspire so many people because uh, the information, the fields are floating around and people are accessing it. Yeah, and we'll be, we will be ourselves <clears throat> in service, more uh, in service to the others, right? Like we can offer more, we can um, help more. We're cleaner, you know, our heart is cleaner. Yeah, and, and if there are people that know you and they can see that you're getting so much better, they get interested. Like my own friends, right. even though they thought I'm crazy at first, they are now starting quest to ask questions. Exactly. That's how it works, yeah. yeah. They, might take they, they don't get it, but they don't need to because they can see that something is changing positively. Right. And nothing else that they know of does it for them. 
So if they see someone who got his shit together, so to speak, who is changing rapidly, they want to do it too. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess we'll wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. It's almost two hours. And uh, we thank you so much for your time and everybody who's uh, shared to support. Thank you all. And uh, let's keep that plasma love always flowing. We'll see you back on the page, back on the Zoom calls, and uh, we'll keep it going. Thank you, George. <laughs> George, right? Okay, all right, George. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. All the best to you. See you guys. Thank you. Ciao. Love you guys. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.